you can hit me with the words you fling Hey, how's it going, everybody? This is Nick Akin on the South China Morning Post, scmp.com forward slash MMA in Hong Kong. This is the Post Fight Podcast, and I am here to break down UFC Fight Island 4 with my man, John Hyung Ko. How's it going, John? Going good, man. Going good. Love to love to be talking fights, man. Back to back to back. I don't even know how many weeks in a row, but it's good to be here. You like my new mic setup, Yeah. Finally oh, putting course, used man. to this flag. Nice, <laughs> nice. Uh, get that logo out there. Yep, yeah, and I'll be sending you one in the post with a T-shirt as well. Okay, so that, that, that sounds good. A couple yeah. T-shirts. Maybe I'm going okay. to have to give them out to people in uh, in Korea, some of the fighters, and have them take pictures or something. Please, I got so many. You can take them off my hands. <laughs> yeah, send me a bunch of them. All right, all right. Well, yeah, let's get to it. As usual, it's uh, going to be a good card. I think we got a headline fight. Um, Holly Holm against Serena Aldana. Let's get your picks first, John. What's going on with this one? Man, this is a. This is a I think this is a great fight uh, to have as a main event. Uh, a lot of people are complaining about um, this card, but man, you're not going to have pay per views and stack lineups back to back to back. Think of it as another sports league, just like uh, the NFL or or Major League Baseball. The, is every game the best game against the best players in the or the best teams? Are they fighting? Are they playing each other in the league every game? No. Sometimes you have games where it's you know like the mid level or or not the not the uh, the top teams or the top players competing against each other and that's what this card is this card is one of those but there's a lot of great fighters and you got holly holmes she's a former champ at a at batam weight and uh and a former title challenger at featherweight man she's a beast and uh she's going in here it looks like as the favorite um i don't know if she's the favorite i feel like aldana is on a roll right now she's won two in a row and in her last fight man it was amazing she knocked out Vieira who has never lost and she looked amazing doing it uh, Holly Holmes she's also coming off a off a win um so I feel like this is a great fight for the division uh this is a great test for Aldana I, I the favorite is Holly Holm but I feel like the favorite is Aldana I think she has a, a, a more well-rounded skill set compared to Holly Holmes. Even though Holly Holmes has the experience on her side, I feel like it's Aldana's time and it's her, it's her fight to lose. So I'm taking Aldana in this fight. Uh, they, they're going to do a lot of exchanging on the feet. Uh, I, I think Aldana, she's very confident in her boxing to where she's going to go in there and try to box Holly Holm. And, and man, she's got to be aware of those kicks, man, because Holly Holm, man, she's a, she's her legs, man. They're, they're like tree trunks. If you get hit by one of those, you're going out. You know, a lot of people have tasted that. Uh, the two most famous ones are uh, Ronda Rousey and uh, Betch Carrera. So um, I think Aldana's taking this really serious. And, and this is a fight that has been in the works for a while, I believe. Uh, I think it was canceled a few weeks back. So I'm excited to see this matchup. Um, one thing that's really important to, like uh, – you know, like focus on is, is the age of Holly Holm. You know, she's, she's 38 years old. I don't, I don't see many other women fighters at that age fighting still. I don't, do you recall anybody that's that old still fighting? I think Holly Holmes is the oldest fighter right now. She's older than a cyborg and cyborg has been fighting forever. But uh, I, I look at that too. I look at age and uh, I just look at the trajectory of, of these two women. And I feel like Aldana's on this upward trajectory compared to Holly Holmes. She's just kind of trying to find her, trying to still like figure out if she's still a contender or not, man. And and the UFC must love her, man, because they always give her all the top contenders and they always give her like pay-per-view slots or even main events continually. Uh, maybe she has some kind of, you know, secrets on Dana White or something. I don't know, but uh, well, she keeps getting the favorites. It's like she's still maybe riding that Ronda Rousey win, right? That must be something to do with it. Man, that was like, I don't even know how many years ago, though. You know, <laughs> she's, been, she's been knocked out, you know, and she's been beaten, you know, in, in, in fights in the past. I wasn't and, even living in know. Hong Kong when that happened. That was 2000 and I want to say 15. I don't even remember my memory yeah. shot. So, <laughs> like, but I just remember that fight in Australia. And uh, yeah, and, and a lot of people were shocked by that. Uh, but 
I, you know, are we going to get that Holly Holm? You know, the one that beat Ronda Rousey? I don't think so. I feel like Holly Holm in, in her last couple of fights, she's, she's fighting to win, but not to finish. And, uh, and I think we're going to get some of that in this fight. And I think Aldana is just going to, you know, outwork her and, uh, and kind of like it, I don't want to see a finish coming. I feel like it will be a decision, but we're going to see a, a lot of exchanges on the feet. And uh, we could see uh, Holly Holm getting bloodied up. All right. Well, yeah, we saw the odds there. Uh, Holly Holm was slight favorite um, and Aldana was near even. We haven't got Chris, so we haven't got anyone to disagree with you. So you're going to have to just go with whatever John says if you're watching and you're looking <laughs> for some advice on who to bet. No pressure, John. You got to get these ones right this week. Well, last okay. week I, I I I was making picks with like just to go against the grain, you know. And and this week I'm going to tell you my real picks, like the picks that have uh, have gotten me to number one in the rankings in in amongst Korean journalists. They do this uh, uh like picks thing with all the Korean journalists. There's about ten of them, and I'm ranked number one in there. You know what I mean? So I told you know like usually I don't pick like that. But this week, uh, last week I did, and uh, this week I'm back to my normal self at picking, and I'm taking Aldana in this fight. Like I feel like this, she's she, overall she's just gonna be much better than Holly Holmes in this fight. All right, well, how about this one then, Jorgen De Castro against Carlos Felipe? What's your pick, John, on this one, the co-main event? Man, this is a this is a tricky fight too. You know, Jorgen's coming off his first loss of his career and uh and it was against uh greg hardy of all people you know a lot of people hate greg hardy they wanted jorgen to go in there and knock him out and that didn't happen uh greg hardy had a, a really good game plan against jorgen and and i feel jorgen was injured early in that fight i think that's what he told me in the interview so if you i, I did an interview with jorgen before this fight so if you want to go back and and look for that, you know, go check it out. Jorgen's one of the nicest guys, one of the happiest guys you ever you ever see, uh, you ever talk to, man. But um, yeah, in his last fight, you know, he just didn't perform well. He, he got injured early in the fight and just couldn't get anything started. And and uh, what Greg Hardy did was keep the distance and just kind of chop away, and he won the decision. Uh, Jorgen, he says that uh, he's there to entertain. He's not really focused on like getting a, a title or anything like that he just wants to get paid and entertain and what the, what what's entertaining about heavyweights is getting that knockout and that's what he said he's like i have no option i need to get a knockout i need to get paid i need to get a bonus you know all of those things that you know he, he's a prize fighter he's he's focused on fighting for the money and uh, i feel like he's going to go in there with a totally different uh mindset compared to the last fight and he's going to be throwing bombs and it's going to be scary i i think he's going to get the get the knockout in this fight unless felipe somehow gets the fight to the ground and then that's a whole nother story but uh felipe he's a young guy he's 25 years old um they're both the same height it reaches about the same uh but we haven't seen much of felipe and both these guys are coming off losses in their in their last fight uh actually coming off their first losses of their career as a professional. So we'll see who bounces back the best here. And, uh, but I feel like it's going to be Jorgen de Castro. I, you know, he's just, he's just too powerful, man. And, uh, yeah, stand up is nasty. Here, uh, moderate favorite Jorgen de Castro minus 265. Carlos Felipe, moderate underdog plus 220. There you have it. You've got John's pick. Uh, let's move on down the card, I guess. Jermaine Durandamy and, uh, Juliana Pena. Who are you taking on this one, John? Wow, this is a good matchup. I'm surprised this is not the co-main event. Uh, uh, I'm wondering why the UFC went with Jorgen de Castro and and Felipe in the co-main event, and they put this fight third to the yeah, because this main could event. establish a challenger, couldn't it? Exactly. This is a a fight, you know that that makes a lot of sense in my opinion. You know, you got yeah. Jermaine; she's fought for the title. Um, and, uh, and she's probably trying to get back up there. She's actually, she was a, she was the former featherweight champion. So, but this is a bantamweight fight, I believe. Yeah. It's a bantamweight yeah. fight. And so she's trying to get that bantamweight title and, uh, yeah. And, and a win over Juliana Pena would really give her a, a big boost in, in, you know, in, in the title, you know, picture. 
Um, but Juliana Pena, man, she hasn't fought in a long time. And, uh, and she's, she's like, she's like a, a, a style that, uh, I, I feel like Jermaine, Jermaine Durande may would, would, um, excel against, you know, because Jermaine, she can stand on the stay on the outside, you know, pivot, uh, to the side and swing around and, and, and kind of like win a decision in the standup. If, if Juliana Pena can get, get the clinch, on Duranda May and and take her to the ground along the fence, man. Then it's over. Pena's gonna be able to um, win this fight on the ground and and control. I feel like that control is gonna be massive. You saw what um uh what is it Amanda Nunez did against uh Jermaine Duranda May and just took her down and, and basically controlled her on the on the ground and won that five round fight. Uh, Pena she can do the exact same thing. Uh, and unless she has something that she's been working on on her stand-up, I don't see why she doesn't do it that. I see her pushing forward. She might eat some shots, but she's going to get the clinch and she's going to get the takedown and uh, and grind out a, a win and probably possibly get a submission. Even though she's been gone for a long time, I feel like she's she has the skill set to beat Duranda May. And, and, and just like I said about Duranda May, it will catapult... Uh, Pena to into the title picture also like maybe she wins this fight uh she could possibly fight the winner of the main event or you know just wait for Aldana to get her shot at the title and then Pena will be up next or she fights somebody else but these two fights right here are, are really important for the title picture with uh Nunez uh sitting out you know for the moment or she's actually getting ready for her 145 pound uh title defense against uh, Megan Anderson. So a lot of these fights right here, you know, a lot of people comp- complain about this card, but there's a lot of importance for the women's bantamweight division with these two fights. Uh, but I'm picking Pena to win this fight. I feel like the ground game is uh, is legit, and she's going to use it against uh, Durandamay. Okay, then what about Daquan Townsend against uh, Dusko Todorovic? Sorry if I pronounced either of those wrong. Who are you picking in this one, John? Man, it, it's it's you got Daquan Townsend. He's thirty two fights into his uh into his pro career against a guy that's nine and zero. Uh, and if you look at them, if you stack them up, I I feel Daquan he has uh more experience in the UFC. So I when when I got when you got a young guy coming up who hasn't lost yet and is not as experienced. I'm taking the guy. I'm taking the guy that's experienced, that has more fights, and uh, yeah, and and he's he's the underdog though. So a lot of a lot of hype behind uh, this uh, Serbian, right? From uh, yeah, from Serbia. He's a uh, you know I'm, nine and zero. That's man. not bad. Yeah, he's nine and zero. But you know those nine and zeros, you never know. Like who <laughs> who did he beat to get to that nine and zero? You know, what I mean, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, you sure, know, iffy sure. things, but but the thing is, Daquan Townsend is also on a three fight losing streak, so his back is against the wall. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm gonna always take the guy with with his back against the wall. I feel like this is the the sleeper pick right here of the night. This guy is an underdog. He has three fights. He's lost in a row. His back his back is against the wall. His, his he's fighting for basically a contract to continue in the UFC. I'm taking that guy. You know, you put the dog, you know, in the corner, they're going to, you know, they're going to bite you hard. So, um, yeah, let's take, let's, uh, let's roll with Townsend on this one, the tarantula. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's uh plus two, five, five moderate underdog. And you've got the uh, Derovic is minus three twenty five moderate favorite. Okay. How about this? Um, this is on the prelims. So have we only got four fights on that main card? Looks like it. I guess. Yeah, but basically, this is just the whole main card, though. To be honest yeah. with you, right? <laughs> Fair enough. Well, like you don't have to that. pay extra for the main card. So if you have Fight Pass or or ES or I think ESPN, then you should be able to watch the whole thing for pretty much free, right? Yeah, for sure. I guess in America it might be slightly different. Yeah, with mm-hmm. ESPN Plus. Uh, but anyway, Kyler Phillips against Cameron Else. Um, this one. We got a sorry, I just hit my mic. <laughs> Kyla Phillips against Cameron Else. We got Bantamweight fight on the prelims. 
Matrix. I like that nickname. Uh, looking pretty cool there against Cam Cheetah. What do you think, John? Uh, five wins in a row for Cameron coming in hot. Yeah, he's coming in hot. It's uh, his UFC debut. And uh, I, I think he signed for this fight a week ago. So this is pretty much on a week's notice against Kyler Phillips. Ky- Kyler, or, yeah, Kyler Phillips, he was supposed to fight last weekend. I forgot he was he was supposed to fight, but that fight got, uh, you know, that fight got canceled because uh, I, I I believe his opponent tested positive for COVID or just pulled out for some reason. I see. So he he got rescheduled for Cameron Ellis. Cameron Ellis is probably one of the one of the hottest prospects coming out the UK, um, and he's making his debut. Man, this is a hard fight for uh, uh, Kyler Phillips. Man, you got you know you got a, a lot of guys coming in with these winning streaks and they're making their debuts on like one or two weeks notice and they're winning their fights against uh, veterans of the UFC, you know, guys with a couple fights deep. And I feel like this could be one of those, uh, one of those uh, instances, you know, a guy coming in hot and uh, he's not traveling that far. He's only traveling from England to Abu Dhabi. Uh, and, and, and he has experience, man. He has more fights than Kyler Phil- Phillips. He has 14 fights. Kyler Phillips has eight, right? And uh, his last fight, Kyler did look good, but I feel like Ellis is going to march forward and he's going to uh, get this fight uh, to, to where he wants to take this fight. And uh, and But Fy- Phillips is, is dynamic. His striking is nasty. But I think Cameron Ellis, uh, he poses some uh, threats, you know, overall, like all around skill set wise. Uh, that's going to be dangerous for uh, Phillips. I'm taking Cameron Ellis in this fight. I feel like he's going to grind this out and and maybe even get a finish uh, later in the rounds. Okay. Why don't we move on then? Um, because normally we've just been scanning the prelims, haven't we? But uh, we were someone asked us for our take on the Espino fight last time out. So why don't we just do them all, you know, get John's takes so everyone can bet on whatever fight they want to bet on. We will move on to Carlos Condi against Court McGee. Wow, this should be a good one, huh? Man, this is a this is a trippy fight, you know. This <laughs> a, this is a fight that should have happened like five years ago, you know. Court McGee, um, everybody knows his story, uh, a, a tough veteran, um, and you got Carlos Condit, a former interim champion that kind of has faded away slowly into the abyss. And I feel like a lot of people forgot about Carlos Condit and he hasn't looked very good in his last couple of fights. But if you look at him, uh, he's, he's fought some good guys. You know, he's, he's, it's not like he's losing to chumps and court McGee. He's a guy that just never goes away, man. He's like a zombie. But if you look at it, look at their record, man. Carlos Condit is on like a five fight losing streak. That is insane. And then court McGee has lost his last four out of five. Oh man, this this is weird, man. Like I don't, and both guys are in their mid thirties. They've had a bunch of fights, man. It's hard to choose like who you taking in this fight, but I, I'm gonna take Court McGee. I think Court McGee just his toughness and his grit is gonna win this fight. I don't I don't feel like Carlos Condit poses any like major threats to Court McGee. Uh, you know, Condit doesn't really go to the ground. And uh, he's going to stand and, and trade with McGee. And I feel like McGee has a, a, a good enough chin to withstand the onslaught of Carlos Condit and his striking. And he's going to push forward and, and grind it out, man. It's going to be a uh, – both guys are going to be pretty messed up, I think, after this fight. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but Court McGee is going to win it for sure. I can't well, say we, for sure. but <laughs> Carlos Condit. Near even uh, plus 115. Court McGee, slight favorite, minus 140. Let's move on. Let's keep going. John, what about this one? I know you've interviewed him. Joshua Kulabau against Charles Edge or Dane. That should also be an awesome fight, shouldn't it? Uh, I think Charles is coming off a, a loss. Uh, but, yeah, this, this should be awesome, I think. Yeah, it's going to be a great fight because both guys are strikers. Uh, this could be one of those fight of the night. Uh, potentials right here. Um, Kulabau, he's coming off that loss in his UFC debut, but he actually, he also fought at lightweight against a guy that's a massive lightweight. 
and uh, he just got dominated. And, and I think that's what a lot of people expected. Uh, and, you know, it's, you got to look at it like this. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do to get your foot in the door. And I think that's what Kulabao was thinking. Like, you know, I might be at a disadvantage in my debut, but I got to just get in there. And uh, he, he lost for the first time in his USC debut, but it seems like he's learned a lot from there. And uh, and he's and since then, he's been training with Martin Nguyen. He's been training with Alex Volkanovsky. So, like, guys that he hasn't really trained with in the past, he's added those training partners to his his crew uh, his, like his, for his camp. And, uh, and he was also part of Alex Volkanovsky's champ camp when, when they were, when he was preparing for, uh, Max Holloway. So I'm pretty sure he learned a lot from, from that. And, and I interviewed him, like you said, and he's, he said all of these things. So go check that out. Uh, Jordan, man, he's, he's been surprising as of late, you know I mean? His last two fights, they were, there were some great fights. His striking has improved so much and, and uh, yeah, he's only 24 years old too. Uh, Kulabal's only 26. These guys are the future of the division right here, and they're they're meeting at the right time. Um, Jordan, last fight, it was a split decision, I believe, against Andre Feely. And Andre Feely's, like, I, in my eyes, Andre Feely's, like, a top 15 guy. And uh, Jordan went to the split with him, and they were striking like crazy in that fight. If you go back and watch it, very entertaining fight. Uh, it should have been fight of the night. If I, maybe it was. I'm not for sure. But before that, he, he was in a fight of the night with uh, – Superboy, Korean Superboy uh, in, in Busan. We were there, right? Yeah, we were there. Yeah. We were at that event. Yeah, crazy and, uh, knockout. Yeah. yeah, and it was a great knockout. You know what I mean? He he, uh, he he got the finish in the third round. That was a very good uh, performance by him. And, and I feel like in this fight, uh, he's just going to be better. And uh, even though Kulabao is a great striker, I feel like he lacks that experience against the higher level competition. And... Um, and I think that Jordan is going to come in and uh, and win the exchanges on the feet. And uh, he's probably going to pull off uh, a decision, but it's going to be one of those crazy fights. Like, um, like kind of like Kai Kara France and uh, Brandon Royval, that kind of style of fight. These guys are going to be slinging, and it's going to be fun to watch. But I'm taking Jordan. Okay, what about uh, Jordan Williams against Nassau Dinimovov? Uh, let me bring it up on screen here. Uh, we got a middleweight fight here. Who are you picking, John? Jordan Williams, man. He's a guy that's been through everything. The Contender Series three times, and then he finally gets signed on the third try. And then a couple weeks later, he's fighting on his first UFC card on Fight Island. That is just insane, right, how things can work out. Um, but Jordan Williams, uh, another guy that I've interviewed many times, and, and I was going to interview him, but... You know, it was just too late. The card was coming up. I don't want to bother him. But, uh, yeah, he's a guy that, uh, man, he's good, man, all around. He's good. He got knockout power. Um, it's it's hard to say, like, what what I can expect from uh, I'm an, uh, what is it, I'm a Vav, I'm, 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 I'm Avov. God, I can't <laughs> not say names very well. Uh, the Russian sniper. But he's a Russian sniper, but he's from France. Uh, I don't. Like that doesn't make any sense to me. That's weird, right? Well, but anyway, uh, I wrote there at least. Yeah, so most likely this guy is a sniper, so he's a striker, and he's on a you know, he's on a winning streak. But Jordan Williams, man, this guy has been through the ringer, and that experience is going to play a big factor in his UFC debut. Uh, and and Jordan Williams, he's fought Russians, he's fought guys from that side of the world, so it's not going to be something that. Um, is new to him. Um, but I, I see that uh, I'm a, I'm a Vav. He, uh, he trains over there at MMA factory in France with, um, with uh, Cyril gone and uh, those guys, that team out there. So it's not like he doesn't have a good team around him or anything like that, but I feel like Jordan Williams is riding a high right now. And, uh, and just all around skill set is probably better than him and the experience side. He's much more experienced than been through, uh, more uh, pressure-filled moments than uh, than the the Russian sniper. So I'm taking the the American sniper. <laughs> okay. Well, the American sniper is a slight favorite, minus 160. Uh, you can get him above the Russian sniper, plus 130, slight underdog. Why don't we move on? It's our girl Loma Lukbunmi. Uh, she's back against Jin Yu Frey. 
Uh, Loma coming off a loss, having won her UFC debut. You think Loma will be getting back in the win column here, John? Oh, I believe so. I believe that this is going to be a close fight, though. I don't, I don't see this fight being a dominant fight because Jinyu Frey, she's, she's really experienced, and uh, and she, she can strike also, right? She's a striker, but Loma is like, you know, an expert. You know what I mean? Like Jin, she's an expert, but Loma is just like, she's been fighting since she was like six years old or whatever. She's had like hundreds of fights in in Muay Thai, and and now. I feel like Loma, she's she's transitioning really well into the MMA side, and she's put on some size uh, at the last couple of camps to kind of fill her body up to the strawweight division because Loma's a, a, an atom weight, right? And she's been fighting there before she went to the UFC. Um, which you know what's crazy to me is in her fifth, in her sixth fight as a professional, she fought Angela Hill, who is like a top ten contender in that division. And she and she fought her decent, you know what I mean, and uh, went to the decision with her. So I feel like that gives her a lot of confidence, Loma, and uh, and Jin, man, she's she's fought the best atom weights in the world. But I feel like her fighting at at straw weight is gonna take her a couple fights to get used to the the fighters, and uh, and and Loma's a little bit ahead in that factor. I think they're going to stand and trade and uh, Jin is going to use a lot of clinch to kind of control Loma. And uh, man, there's an 11 year age difference too, which is pretty insane. Um, and, and if you look at it, Jin has a three inch reach advantage, but I feel like Loma's just, her striking is at uh, a high level. Jin's striking is at a high level too, but, um, but I feel like the Thai clinch the Thai plum that Loma uses to to like throw her opponents down, that's going to come in handy because Jin's going to try to clinch with her. Um, it's going to be a fun fight to watch. Um, I, I, you know, I've like, I, I'm cool with like both the coaches too. Like I know both coaches really well, like George and Douglas, which is Jin's uh, husband. Uh, I've spoke to them many times, man. So it's like, I don't really want to pick anybody. You know what I mean? Like I've like know these guys, but I feel like Loma's going to win this fight. It's, it's, I don't think it's going to be a finish, but uh, they're going to be trading and there's going to be a lot of clinching. And uh, and I feel like Loma is just a little bit more experienced in that clinching. Overall, Jin's experience in MMA, but that clinch, that clinch is going to be uh, nasty and it's going to be very important for this fight and winning this fight. Uh, the stand-up, I don't know. I, it, it's MMA, you know what I mean? It's not full-blown Muay Thai, but... Uh, but I feel like uh, the clinch, man, is going to be important here. Uh, the fence work. And uh, I think Jin's going to use uh, some wrestling too. Uh, and if, if Loma can stay off the mat, you know, and, and defend well against the takedowns, she should be able to win this fight. Right. Well, yeah, Loma is a slight favorite, uh, minus 130. We've got another of our guys here, Alateng Hey Lee. He's back. He's fighting Casey Kenny. Uh, he he looks impressive. Uh, so we also saw him in in Busan. Uh, I think he's he's riding uh, yeah four fights now. He's won in a row the Mongolian night. Um, what what do you think? Can he keep rolling against Kenny? Mm, it's hard to say. You know he he in the last fight in Busan, a lot of people felt like he didn't win that fight. You know, a lot of people felt like he lost on the judges' scorecards. But um, but it's a win, and I'm interested to see how he does against Kenny because Kenny's like a real test for him. You know what I mean? Like, like uh, his last fight was a test, but Kenny's fought some high level guys. And what Kenny was telling me, you know, in our interview, if you want to go back and watch that, is that he wants to get into a slugfest with Alatang. And uh, man, if I don't know if that's a good idea, you know, Alatang, he's the Mongolian knight. <laughs> you know, like he can take some shots, you know, we saw him take some massive shots from, uh, from, uh, what's, uh, what's uh, his Ryan name? Benoit. Yeah. Ryan Benoit. Right. So, um, you know, Casey's the, uh, the favorite in this fight and it's a, it's a pretty big favorite in this fight, but I feel like uh, a lot of these betters or these, uh, handicappers are underestimating Alatang's chin. You know, I feel like he's going to come forward and he's going to take a shot to land a shot. 
And it's going to be basically Rock'em Sock'em Robots in this fight. So it's a toss-up. Uh, if I had to pick somebody to win this fight, I feel like um, Kenny will win this fight. The reason why is because just an experience, man. The experience factor is huge when you get into like those deeper rounds and you're you're beat up and 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 you got to go back out there against another really really high level guy. And Kenny is has been through that a few times. I see that you know he's gonna win this fight. This is another potential of a fight of the night. Okay, why don't we? Move on to the final fight, or it'll be the first fight of the night, but uh, our last one here, Jessina Ayari against Luigi Vendramini. Um, John, let's go. We haven't got Chris, so we're going straight to you again. Who are you picking? Um, one thing I know is that Jessine, uh, was it Ayari, he's been in the UFC for quite a while, but he just hasn't really been fighting. You know, and, and it's kind of a shock that... Uh, He's actually on this card, and he's taking on Luigi, the Italian sta- – come on. <laughs> come on. The Italian stallion, and he, but he's from Brazil? What is this? So, like that – so, I guess he's Italian, but he trains in Brazil with his team. And then you got Jessen, who is German, uh, trans out there, had uh, Hammer's team. Um, man, I'm going to take uh, – both these guys are coming off losses – uh, Justin is coming off back-to-back losses. Probably hasn't fought in a long time, and he's the underdog. I'm gonna take the Italian stallion Luigi. Three things: Luigi, great name, Italian <laughs> stallion, awesome, incredible nickname, and uh, and uh, yeah, and he's an Italian that ha- go- has tr- like moved to Brazil and trained there and 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 cultivated himself down there. Man, he, he's going to be a tough guy right here. So I'm going to take uh, Luigi in this fight. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't really know much about these guys. I know a little bit about Jason, but uh, what, what I know about him doesn't really, you know, make me confident in picking him. I, I'll take the Luigi, the Italian stallion, 24 years old. You know, it's going to be great. And um, and I don't know, what weight class is that? Is that lightweight or welterweight? Yeah, I think lightweight. Uh, let me confirm that. Yep, lightweight fight. Uh, yeah, isn't the and then, Italian, um, Marvin Vittori's nickname, or have I got that wrong? No, that's the Italian Dream. Those okay. are those are that's a good nickname too, right there. Anything with Italian, I think, is a good nickname. You know, that Italian, Italian, Italian. Brazilian, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, what can you do, man? It's, you know, but uh, nicknames are always fun, man. Like, you know, yeah. like the Mongolian Knight. That's a crazy. Yeah. That's a good nickname, right there. All right, John, thanks for joining us. Thanks for all your picks and predictions. Hope everyone, don't blame John if, if he's not got them right. But I think, <laughs> yeah, hope it doesn't ruin your parlays. No, thanks, John. I appreciate uh, all your insight and analysis, mm-hmm. top notch as always. And yeah, let's, let's uh, chat again this week. Otherwise, we'll see you all again on Sunday. We'll be recapping the show in full. Uh, yeah, I hope you all enjoy it. See you again next time. Hey guys, Sasha Platnikoff here, letting you know to tune in to SCMP Post Fight for all your weekly martial arts news.